Oh my gosh, guys, look! Look how tall the aviary is gonna be! Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe! What's up, my high squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so! Guys, welcome to another vlog here at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. This vlog will cover a trip because Mabuhai Squad, we are going to another province here in the Philippines um, and we're going not really for vacation, it's to work. We're gonna be shooting another parody. So for those of you who are new to this channel, this vlog channel is not my only channel. Um, I have a comedy channel, I have an ant channel, Ants Canada. Um, and I have a music channel too, so um, we're going to shoot content for our comedy channel which is most known for its Filipino cultural parodies of popular songs. Um, and you know, in the past I've done If Freddie Mercury Were Filipino, where I sing about Filipino culture to the songs of Freddie Mercury hits. Um, I've done uh, Filipino uh, Aladdin parodies and it's just something that I love to do. It's a lot of fun, it's comedy, and it's also educational. And we are going to a very special place. Can't wait to take you guys along. Welcome to another vlog, yay! So guys, it's kind of a big operation right now. Simply due to my diet requirements. I always say it, it's quite easy to eat healthy, but guys, eating healthy often means packing your own food while you're gone because you, I don't want to make the lack of options for healthy food um, an excuse to not eat healthy. So we're going to bring a bunch of stuff, going to bring our probiotics Yakult, probiotics uh, kombucha, we've got nature's Gatorade, coconut water, going to bring that. Um, and in here, I've got some sardines, awesome protein and fats, healthy fats, calcium. I'm also bringing Japanese uh, fermented radish. That's, what, that's what's in here, see? Also probiotics. We've got hard-boiled eggs for, well, a bunch of nutrients, including protein and fats. Got that. I'm gonna bring pasta. That's easy to eat, very good carb. We've boiled chicken breast for protein. Also gonna give some to the dogs. We're also going to bring saba. Guys, this sweet plantain was grown in our yard. As you saw in a previous vlog, we um, harvested this from our saba banana trees recently. So we're gonna bring this. Awesome carb, awesome fiber. We're packing all our equipment. We've got a drone. We've got lights here. Um, some props in these bags and a speaker. And of course, our Japanese radish. All right, guys, we've packed it all. We've got our hard boiled eggs, salmon, all cooked. See? We got pasta with chopped up chicken breast, our saba. All right, guys, we're ready. We're ready for this trip. All right, guys, our closet room is totally hectic right now because we are packing outfits and costumes for the um, parody. Guys, we're going big with this parody. I'll tell you about it in a bit. Um, outfit, like clothes to wear. We'll be back, Sahara. Saif. We'll be back, okay? Saif, you be good, okay? We'll be back. We'll be back. All right, guys, road trip. I'm gonna lie down. This is gonna be about a five hour drive, guys. guys so we are here at a really cool place called Villa Escudero remember when we took my family here we ate in the river well guys guess what they've got like 
an overnight stay place, kind of like hotel rooms. And we're gonna stay here overnight because we're gonna wake up early to start shooting here for our parody. Wow. <gasps> Turn on the, the lights. Okay. Side. Yeah. Oh, okay. sweet. Oh my gosh, look at the walls. <gasps> oh, so cute. I love the bed. Oh my gosh. No way. Oh, this <laughs> is so cool. <gasps> Let's open it. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, oh wow. It's sliding. Oh my gosh, wow, look at the floor. Wow. Oh, look at the hammock and the couch. Oh, it's so nice. And guys, look at this beautiful... Is this a river? It's a river or a pond. Amazing. Oh, it's so beautiful, guys. I love how everything is made of natural materials. Like, look, the floor made of little tiny what is that bamboo or rattan wooden furniture see bamboo garbage can this woven duyan like hammock it's so cute look we even have a parol a, a star-shaped lantern very filipino and it's a christmas ornament in case you don't know here in the philippines we're already in christmas season we start september 1st every year amazing and guys, I love this lounge chair. Very Filipino. Let's see the bathroom, guys. Ooh, oh, it's quite large. It's quite a big bathroom here. <gasps> Hairy Asian. <laughs> hey. Wow, mm, it smells good too. Look at the sink countertop. Amazing. Guys, we got fruits. I love it. Mm. I'm gonna eat this mango later. And we do have a fridge. This is great. Oh with beer and pop guys we're gonna stock this with our healthy food let's do the tradition mabu high squad Woo! Ah, yeah. so guys you might be wondering what parody we're filming um i'm not gonna say i'm gonna keep that a surprise but just know that we will shoot bts and i'll explain everything after the parody comes out and is published on our comedy channel so stay tuned for that but i will vlog like randomly as we go around this Villa Escudero property. It's really amazing this place. Guys, look how gorgeous this is. You can go on these long rafts, bamboo rafts. Remember when we took my friend Lawrence way back a couple years ago or a few years ago along here? We also took Legaya with us when she was alive. Our uh, late African great parrot. See, they have swimming pool. Gorgeous, awesome, and beautiful flowers. Look at that. Mabu High Squad, I'd like you to meet Tita Rosalie and Ruthie. And they, well, you guys run this place. They own this place and run this place. Great work. Thank and you. this place is honestly iconic here Thank in the you. Philippines. And congratulations on all the success. So Mabu High Squad, they were so kind enough to let us film uh, our parody tomorrow here at uh, Villa Escudero. Would you like to invite m our followers to come visit Villa Escudero? Yeah, please come and visit Villa Escudero Plantations and Resort. We're so, you know, I met Mikey and RJ about a year ago, was it? Or the, more? More. It was before pandemic, I think. Before pandemic. Yeah. and. Of course, I was so excited. <laughs> it's Mikey. <laughs> but it's so nice that they're back. And um, if you want to see culture and heritage, this is the place. This is so. definitely the place. And now you guys know why we chose this place to <laughs> film, right? Culture and heritage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Thank you so much. Me. They're so awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> Mabu High Squad, good morning. Um, I'm here with Tita Rosalie Hi. and um, look at this we're in a beautiful golf cart there's RJ and what's your name Karen Paul. Karen and Ate Karen guys we're going to lunch now and let me tell you Mabu High Squad we shot for the parody and it, it looks so good okay but I don't want to spoil things I've uploaded a few teasers on my Instagram stories but oh I'm so happy I 
Hope you guys enjoy the parody. But anyways, this is so cool. I love this golf cart. <laughs> I feel like we're in Jurassic Park, guys. Oh my god. Where's the T-Rex? Yeah, where is it? <laughs> this is a beautiful property. How big is Villa Escudero property? How many hectares? Eight, 80. 80 hectares? Yeah. That's massive! Uh, RJ, did you hear that? And I thought our Elo Elo farm was big. This is more than double that. Wow! It's so beautiful too, and it's so well tended. The gardening is on point. Look at these hedges. The plants are all very healthy and perfectly manicured. Guys, look. Carabao. Hello! This is Mucha. Hi, Mucha. I remember you. There's another one. Wow. Wow, guys. We are so privileged right now because Tita Rosalie is taking us to their ancestral home. Look at it. This is, this was Barbie before Barbie. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. Uh, look at how gorgeous. And there's, those are fish in there. Yes. <gasps> we, I, I'll tour you first. Oh, wow. so that... RJ. I want our own golf cart. Villa Escudero, look, see? See? Branded. Oh, wow. So nice. Okay, guys, I'm gonna let you go because it's kind of private. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Guys, here back at the room, and I am watching this very skilled, wait, you guys need to see this. It's a very skilled, Heron? It's a small heron species or something. And it's fishing and it's catching little fish. It's so fast. Watch. It walks slowly so not to scare the fish. I ran to grab my camera because I was watching it. It caught like two fish. Or maybe insects, I don't know. But isn't that awesome? Oh, it sees one. I think it looks like it sees something. Oh, it caught one, but ugh, the bamboo hit it. It's looking. It's looking. And bam! See? Oh, there it goes. Oh, it caught a little baby fish. Awesome. Wow, so skilled. What's up, Mabu High Squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys. I slept so well. What a long day yesterday of shooting. Um, for our parody, I shot a lot of BTS, but again, I'm not going to release that footage and spoil our parody, which is coming up probably sometime this week. You guys will get to see all of that in the future after the parody goes live. Um, but yeah, we're back at home at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse as usual. Mm -hmm. Guys, have a look. Ooh, look at this structure. Forgot what is in here. Something's in here. I see they're dumping, what is that, concrete? Whoa. And then guys, look. <gasps> the foundations for the future aviary. Whoa, they're huge. Guys, look, they're massive. They're, they're my height. And I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, they're huge. Doesn't look like it in the vlog, but this is great. So what's gonna happen is these pergolas are going to be nailed onto the top. So they're gonna be super tall. Oh my gosh, the birds are gonna love this aviary. And it's super long. It's longer than it is tall, unlike the aviary in our house, which is taller than it is long. I think the birds will love this change because they'll get to fly back and forth for the first time. Like. They have a lot of horizontal flying room already in their aviary, but not like this. This is this is quite a distance. This is great. It's kind of like a lap pool. Um, and they'll have the height that they like as well. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, and look here. By the way, guys, if you're new, this side is our farming lot side, currently under development. And look, we've laid out the plant the planter beds. Ooh, so this is where they're going, I think. And then we're gonna plant, I guess, veggies here. Whoa, look at this side, guys. They evened it out, like there's still a slope, but it's not as drastic. Awesome. 
and it looks really, really cool in real life. This is gonna be fun to develop. We're not sure exactly yet what we're gonna do here, but on this entire farming lot side, we're gonna do all our farming activities. So growing of fruit bearing trees, vegetables, herbs. Um, we'll keep our animals here. Uh, we have Billy, our goat, way down there. What else? We'll have chickens and we'll build some enclosures for animals that need homes. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. This is exciting. Um, and we decided to put all of this farming stuff and animal park stuff. Guys, we're, we have a mini zoo, essentially. Uh, we decided to keep it separate from our living area, which I think is a good idea. Because otherwise we wouldn't have built this wall here, you see. It would have just gone all the way around the property. And the thing too is, this wall was already built because we didn't know when we first got this lot that we would also be acquiring this lot. We, uh, This lot was suddenly for sale. Like the ones who bought it offered it up for sale. And we're like, yes, we're going to take it. So we got it. And we were so happy to break the news to everybody that we got this side lot. So awesome. And there's a lot of space, guys, to do stuff. It's got some nice tree cover. And way down there, all that forest is ours too. I'm going to use it to create a food forest. Plant some food. Guys, RJ says we're going to also put planter beds on that side. Way down there along that wall. Oh, so cool. Oh, but I'm looking forward to that aviary. Yay! Good morning, Magnus. Hi, Mags. It's our blue-green iguana. Soaking up some sun. Yes. Look at how blue he is, wow. Guys, is it just me or is he growing? He looks bigger. Here. Hungry? Yes? No? Maybe so? Okay, later when he's warmer. Mmm. Yummy. Mmm. Look at his beautiful eyes. You have such beautiful copper eyes, Magnus. Gorgeous. And good appetite, too. <laughs> Look at that color, guys. Wow. Magnus, you are awesome. Here. Big bite. Mmm. Go, go, go. Yes. Isn't it incredible that these vegetarian lizards grow so big? And guys, as I've mentioned in previous vlogs, He's not full grown. He can grow up to six feet long. These lizards are giants. Guys, the plumeria are looking sweet. And these trees here as well, these, well, when they flower, they look like bird's beaks, like parrot beaks, beautiful red flowers. Those trees are doing well. All the plants are doing really, really well. Now that it's rainy season, just gorgeous. Look at these curtains of vines. Beautiful. All right, guys. So, as you saw in the last vlog, pond is done. Now, these two floating logs originally were, like, put up against here. But we pushed them in because we're about to put, like, concrete sort of stools just so it's more secure. I was just afraid that the logs would kind of roll across and maybe hurt one of the animals. It wasn't as secure as I wanted it to be. So we're gonna have like little platforms that these logs can sit on. Earlier, I saw the turtles. There they are. They're right there. Turbo and Donatello together. See them? They're husband and wife, guys. And believe it or not, the small one, which is the male, is I believe sexually mature. I think they're gonna mate. <laughs> Isn't that size difference crazy? We're just doing a little maintenance on this filter and we're gonna turn it on today and everything should be good. There are little guppies already proliferating inside and they're eating the mosquito larvae. There was, as you saw in a previous vlog, a water monitor in here, but I think it's somewhere in these plants probably, or it's left, I don't know, or maybe underwater somewhere. I don't know, but I'm really excited why did you guys go underwater? When I was here earlier, they were floating on the surface together. But it's cute to see them together, even underwater. Hi guys. So cute. They're inseparable, guys. I just turned on this water fountain 
for a bit just to keep the water moving while we figure out filter situation. I think we have some issues apparently. Hopefully not too serious. All right guys, time for the first meal of the day. Of course, we got overnight oats. I'm gonna put two big scoops of that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, look at all that. Look at that like goodness. Fiber, tons of micronutrients, awesome carbs, proteins, fats, and then that's this here's prebiotic. Now time for some probiotics. We got some Yakult here. Japanese fermented like yogurt drink. Mmm, this is gonna be so good, guys. Mmm. And then I'm going to add some little bit of coconut water. Yes which is rich in electrolytes. Then, gonna add some fresh fruit. And this time, gonna add our saba. See, look, this is all the saba we have left. We harvested this bunch of saba, right, from our yard. Can you believe we grew this? Wow. Um, and we gave away a lot, because guys, there was like a hundred of them. Um, but this is what we have, so. That's gonna be our seasonal fruit carb for now. Saba is a native banana cultivar, also known as sweet plantain in English. Filipinos love this. They often have it cooked, but I love it raw. Raw is my favorite way to eat this. And so healthy, potassium, carbs as well, fiber, yeah. All right, and that, is the super meal. Mmm, this is gonna be so good, guys. All right, guys, it is almost 1 p.m. and I've achieved so much already. Went to the gym this morning, did some swimming for half an hour, did half an hour of sauna, and now time to eat and nourish the body. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Guys, so good. I love eating like this kind of food. So clean, nice and raw. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Coconut water, cheers. Mm. Guys, healthy food is so good. So yummy. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Every morning, these dogs do the patrol around the property to see if everything looks okay, if there are any random animals they can chastise. Come here, Ritz. Yes. She's trying to... <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Okay. You eat. Okay, now they're playing. Hi, Brittany. Yes. You're so, so beautiful. This is Brittany, our Sholo Eats Squintly, AKA Mexican Hairless. Let's go to the pond. So, turns out our filter has a problem, as I said yesterday, but we won't be able to fix it until Friday, which is uh, two days from now. So, water will be okay um, over the next two days. But, it needs to keep moving. We can't have it still like this. I'm gonna have this water fountain turned on 24 hours until then. Hey Rizal, what are you... You're not allowed here. Out! Out! Good boy. Rizal is very obedient, guys. Um, in case you're just joining us, this water fountain is just additional. It's not connected to any filter or anything like that. It's just really something we could turn on and off every now and then but i wanted to turn it on today because the water will not be really moving i'm not afraid of the nitrate buildup over the next two days this water is really it's a lot of water guys so um it should not be toxic levels we're also constantly adding fresh water in and then some of the water overflows out into the creek at the back. So, I'm not concerned. The logs have since floated this way. Oh, there they are. 
Oh, so cute. They saw me coming, so they went underwater. Hi, guys. It's so adorable how they're inseparable. I see you. <laughs> Hi. You guys liking your new home? Oh. It looks like Turbo wants to court her again. Oh, did I interrupt another dating session? I'm sorry. So when our filter gets fixed, again, clean water pumps out of this water fountain and then heads down there into that intake. And the cycle begins all over again. As you saw in previous vlogs, the diet we have the turtles on is pretty awesome. Really good ingredients, high quality. One of these days, I feel like I'm gonna fall into this pond. Okay, let's see if the turtles will eat. Can I interrupt this date with some pellets, guys? Here, oh. There we go. Oh, they're, they're down there. Come on, guys, I've got food. Okay, it'll just float there and I'll stand back. Okay, why are you guys coming here? The food is way down there. Oh dear. Now another thing we discovered, nightmare, was that this separated this layer here, which we spent about a week to construct. It separated, guys, from the wall. But RJ's not worried because the initial leak that caused us to have to redo the pond in the first place, he feels like it's somewhere down there and not here. And as you can see, the water level has not sunk. There! Oh, they, you're making me waste turtle food. <laughs> it's just floating here now. So we were supposed to put a little uh, concrete, sort of like a stool pillar thing so we could rest those logs on somewhere here and the logs could form like a ramp um, so that the turtles could have access to this land. We're gonna do that today. I guess they couldn't do it yesterday because the workers were busy. Um, but those logs are enough for them to rest for now. When the logs were secured here, I, uh, I wonder if Turbo used that opportunity to dig and lay eggs if she is gravid or if she was pregnant. We'll just have to see. I'm, I'm pretty sure one day we will look into, you know, the pond and see a bunch of tiny turtles. <laughs> Another thing too, in case you're new, all our water uh, here at the Mabuhai Squad Farmhouse comes from an underground source. We don't get city water here. No chlorine. It's just water from a well or an aquifer under the ground. Um, which is why we try to use only eco-friendly products like all our soaps, detergents and all of that they're all eco-friendly and green because it ends up in the water table and ends up in our drinking water and in the water we use for our animals, for our plants which we eat, etc. This dog here is a really good boy. Very smart, very playful, friendly. He really has a loud bark but that makes him a good watchdog. Probably not a good guard dog. <laughs> I don't see him attacking someone. But if he hears or sees anything strange or out of the ordinary, I can hear his bark from my bedroom. <laughs> Thank goodness we're in this neighborhood and, you know, dogs, animals, roosters, all those sounds, even cows, which by the way are quite loud. It never bothers the neighbors, it never bothers us. We're just, it's kind of the background noise that we've become accustomed to. So we're grateful for that. But he's a good watchdog, very friendly, beautiful dog, inquisitive. We love him. And guys, let me tell you, this hair, the hardest coat to maintain. Honestly, if you don't like brushing dogs, if you don't like maintaining coats and it takes a good 15 to 20 minutes to properly brush out their fur every day then don't get a poodle 
<laughs> don't unless you're willing to shave them like we shave him pretty much every couple of months we love when he's so fluffy and his fur is all grown in and he looks like a giant teddy bear it's so cute but it's the hardest to maintain so we try to really keep him shaved regularly it's better for us and it's better for him too because like you know he, he's lighter and <laughs> here in the philippines where it's hot he's he can cool off right Rizalzis, you good boy yes such a good boy look at those eyes gorgeous eyes looking up right into our eyes Rizal, you good boy you're a good boy mm -hmm. and uh, this poodle comes from a champion bloodline the mother is a champion from russia i believe and the father a champion from korea and japan or something like that like the bloodline is really good so confirmation meaning the ratio and measurements of all the body parts are are awesome i'm loving the stillness of the water in the mornings see at sunrise mm, so peaceful and you know what the air is so clean it just feels and smells clean i love that about being out here like neck like with the forest in the yard it's just the air is so pleasant to breathe in first thing in the morning. So we've set up more of these pergolas. Guys, don't worry, they're not gonna be here. The last time we did this, you guys were like, um, some of you were like, um, uh, in my opinion, it won't look good there. We feel like it'll block the house, but it's your choice. You guys are so respectful, um, but no. We're just setting it up here because it's easier to set up than over there where it's mostly soil. Um, these will be moved to the farming lot. We're not sure, I'm not sure yet where. One of these will be the new shelter for Billy, just for when it rains, but for most of the day, he'll be out in the fields, like eating grass, etc. Um, one of them I think will also be for our chickens or possibly two, we'll see. I'm excited to have chickens because I eat eggs every day. They're nature's multivitamin. Guys, you can eat eggs every day. You can have multiple eggs every day. It's not bad for cholesterol. Forget what you were taught in the 80s and 90s. That is now false, according to research. Whether or not we're going to kill chickens to eat, I am not sure. Um, that's kind of hardcore. But, you know, being out on the farm and if we're going to try to be you know, self-sustaining and self-sufficient and meat lovers, which I am, I think I'm gonna have to learn to kill chickens. Do any of you guys kill your animals? Like, do any of you guys live on a farm and have animals that you kill and eat? Let me know what that experience is like. Was it hard when you first started? How did you learn? My mom knows how to kill a chicken. She knows, like one time we raised a chicken in Toronto, Canada, against the law, by the way, <laughs> in our yard. And I watched my mom kill my chicken. She remembers. Like, it was as if she was back on, in her rural town, in Togegero, like totally pulling the feathers off the chicken, slicing its neck, like gutting it. She knows how. So these are things I need to learn, I guess. Oh my guys, look what I found on the stairs. It's like a butterfly wing. Wow, I wonder if it was like a nocturnal butterfly and like some predator ate it? Whoa, or did this happen during the day? Was this, was this casted off by Melody who hunted the butterfly? I wonder. So guys, so it's gonna be sunset soon. Just hanging out in the pool. And guys, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I love the way the sunlight reflects off the water. That's so beautiful! Holy! I don't think it's coming across as well in the vlog, but Mabuhay Squad, in real life, it, the water is glistening. It looks so hypnotic and beautiful. Crazy. And the sun, look, there's kind of like a haze, like a really sort of masking cloud in the sky 
it's not billowing clouds, but it's like sort of like thin clouds and it's causing this cool haze everywhere. So nice. Looks so, so pretty. What do you guys say? Doesn't it? There's like a haze everywhere. And that sun. Mornings and sunsets, guys. My favorite time to swim. Oh, the best. Swimming during the day is fun too. Anytime, really. Even nighttime swimming is so fun. Ah, it's relaxing. At this time, the birds start flying around behind me in the forest. They emerge from the forest. Bright yellow, uh, black naped orioles, the electric blue kingfishers, right? So many different colors. And this forest really makes a very good backdrop for spotting the birds because they really stand out against the green. Guys, way up there is one of the black naped orioles now. Look at it, isn't that beautiful? Wow, it's just the color. It's endemic guys, this bird to the Philippines. Look at it, isn't it so pretty? I believe this is a, a Philippine subspecies of black naped oriole. And I just love seeing them. There are so many in this area. They just fly around in the forest. They come out at this time and I do see them in the mornings. And then during the heat of the day, and I guess at night, they like retreat back into the forest. Look at that stunning yellow, wow. Now I often see them in flocks and in groups, but this one seems to be alone. Or its, its friends are probably somewhere nearby. You're so beautiful. Yes, you, you preening. Whoa, my buhai squad. Now look at the sky. It's like purple. It's like a crazy mauve color. And honestly, everything is that color. Like, if you look around, everything is purple. Holy. Man, guys, my, my cell phone is color correcting it. In real life, it looks unreal. It looks like someone threw a, a mauve filter on everything. Wow, so beautiful. I love colors. See, look at, look at that gorgeous color. So nice. Well, it's the end of another day, guys. Good morning. Good morning, sugar. Wanna hang out? Hmm? Oh honey. Wakey wakey. Good morning guys. It's like 5 a.m. and I'm gonna hang out with the gliders. Alright guys, so I got honey right here. And there's sugar. He's gonna wanna crawl into honey's pouch. Wanna come join honey? I'll take you guys to the to the linen room. Come, let's hang out. Yep. There you go. Inside, go, go, go. You guys can hang out. Crawl in. Go, go, go. Good boy, there we go. Like one big happy family. All right. This is their chance to bond because as you've seen in previous vlogs, these two cannot be together yet. Uh, honey, the wife, is not sexually mature yet. So if they try to breed, it could injure her. So this here is Shoga. Honey is inside. In case you guys are new, I'm introducing my sugar gliders. These are sugar gliders, guys. They're awake at night. They're nighttime animals. Yeah, Shoga. Go. Spend, spend time with Honey. Honey here is... She's the newest one. We got her, what was it, a week, two weeks ago? And she's... Uh, Totally tame now. We finished taming her. Oh, you're so cute. Okay, I'm gonna put you down so you can run around. Go, enjoy. Guys, look how sweet they are to each other. They're grooming each other now. You guys love each other. You guys are lovey doveys. Very social animals, these animals. So when you get a sugar glider, you should always get a pair. 
or a trio and some people keep colonies of these sugar gliders and as you can see they treasure this bonding time together. I don't know if it's a romantic relationship currently between these two um, or if it's just like ah I'm so happy to be with another sugar glider here but there is definitely love between these two and they really treasure their time together. You guys are so cute. Can I join this this group and be a, we could be a trio? Yes. Hi. I love their tails. Look at their tails are so interesting. I'm just checking out your tail. Hi, sugar. Oh, sugar, sugar. How about I get you guys a roach? You guys want to share a roach? Hmm. Oh, sugar. You have to teach honey how to eat insects. Here. There we go. Mmm. Go. Share some with honey. Listen to that crunch, guys. These are feeder roaches, by the way, guys. Not the pest roaches. <gasps> guys, they love it. They'll even eat baby mice, guys. These sugar gliders. Omnivorous animals. Here in the Philippines, um, we feed them a staple diet of Cerelac, which is like a baby, a baby food. And then they also eat uh, veggies, fruits, and insects. Oh, and cooked meats like chicken. They'll eat beef, hard boiled egg. They like that kind of stuff. They eat a variety of foods. Mmm, yummy. What is Honey doing during all of this feeding? Is she watching you? Honey's still young, so there are certain foods she doesn't eat yet, I guess. Oh, she's looking. She's smelling the roach. Give some to Honey. I wonder if she's going to have a bite. Now that she sees Sugar eating that roach. <laughs> oh, these animals are so cute. So guys, I'm going to miss them because we're leaving soon. Um, in about a week... RG and I will be flying to Sydney, Australia. Yes, all of you there in Sydney, Australia, hope you can come to our show. It's at a Filipino festival called Fiesta Cultura um, on October the 1st. Um, I'll be performing for about half an hour on stage. It takes place at Fairfield Showgrounds. So for those of you in Sydney, hope to see you there and meet you in person. That'll be awesome. And then a couple weeks after that, We'll be going to Toronto, Canada. Yay! I'll be flying home. I'm so excited. Um, and I think we're going to be there till November, guys. So, like, we'll be there for a, a bit. Um, and for this whole time, we won't be seeing our pets. So, it's going to be sad. But um, we got to do what we got to do, right? Right, Shugs? And I can't wait to go home, guys. I can't wait to be home. And it'll be fall, so it'll be really chilly. RJ is really looking forward to being in Canada during fall. I think we're also hitting the US guys. Um, I'll reveal where in the US um, soon, but I think we have shows scheduled and meet and greets. So it's gonna be a busy couple of months and I can't wait to take you guys along on the adventure. Watching the birds, hi. In the aviary. <laughs> Every time I sit here, they just kind of try to fly up to the window and then they perch just to watch me while I watch them and then they fly back up there to watch the sunrise and screech at it <laughs> as you can hear now once the uh, aviary is done and they move into it they will truly love having this cage mesh all around them 360 I'm sure they'll really appreciate that well, hello there, Marcelo. There's Marcelo. Hi, Marcelo. Trying to fly up to the glass, but he knows there's glass there. Hi. See? They come up here and they like, they wonder if they can like land on me. No, you can't. This is glass. Gosh, I really love mornings. The light just looks so good. It's so peaceful. Good morning, Conyers. Here are the crimson-bellied, crimson-bellied conures. Well, there was 
They were there. Now they're on a flying frenzy. You guys are so cute. Mm hmm. Good morning. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You guys are so silly. Hi, guys. Good morning. <laughs> Gotta wash these windows. Hi there. Oh my gosh, guys. Look. Look how tall the aviary is gonna be. See that gentleman? Holy. So it's they're gonna rest on those pillars. Oh, the aviary is gonna be massive. Uh, and it's viewable right here from our bedroom. Oh, I love it so much. And look, it's gonna be so long. Like it goes from those pillars over here all the way down, down, down there to those pillars over there. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. And then uh, these here are just assembled. Um, again, they will be, I don't know, they'll be used for other things, but... Oh, this is so cool! Look how tall it is! Guys, I was so concerned that the birds didn't have enough height. Um, and we, and RJ and I were concerned because based on this plan, we were worried about typhoons blowing the entire top off. But we're just gonna go for it. We think it'll work. Oh, this is awesome. So yes, guys, essentially it's the same aviary, slightly smaller, but only slightly, and turned on its side, which for me, I think will be a better design for our parrots. Oh, wow. This is so great. The next challenge will be hanging branches inside, like perching areas. I gotta figure out what we're gonna do. Oh, but this is so great. Look at Look at how big. Wait, we need to go out there. Let's see this on ground level. All right, guys. I'm so excited. I'm wearing my cowboy hat. Shield my face from the sun. Let's go out there. Gosh, gorgeous day. Oh my. Wow. I love that we can see it even from here. So the birds can just perch there and we could like wave and they can see us every day that we are out. And we just walk. Oh my gosh, I'm imagining it now, Mabuhai Squad. Imagine with me. We open, we open this gate <laughs> once it's fixed. And we walk down this a path that we're going to cut out here. And guys, there's the aviary. Oh my, it is so tall. RJ says it's about 14, 14 feet tall. But yeah, that is, that is really something. I'm not sure where we're going to place the double door to the aviary, but maybe here. Look at, look at how tall. Isn't that just awesome? Look, look at the space the birds have to fly back and forth. Oh my guys, wow, look. Let's walk through this aviary guys. Imagine with me, let's manifest. Hello Paul. Good, Good morning. They're just marking the spots where the bolts will go down, see? Now the floor will be concrete, so there will be like this thick of a layer of concrete on the floor just to ease cleaning. See, and they can go all the way here. Isn't that great? Oh, I just, I can't get, this is the perfect height. I can't get over the height. I think the birds will love this. Oh, I'm so happy. The, the, it's taller than I thought it would be. But like this is more than enough height space for the birds and definitely a lot more horizontal flying space yay which excites me because i mean our our aviary horizontally is probably from there to about here see it's not that much but here it'll be more than twice almost three times the horizontal space and i can't wait to see the birds flying around in this aviary so rj says we're gonna mesh this aviary up when we return from Canada, which will probably be November. I mean, we'll try to finish it before we leave for Toronto, but we want to really take our time and make sure it's built properly. Because if we make a mistake, it could spell losing our birds. Hey, Billy, are you ready to have a new shelter? Hmm? Yes. This is Billy, our goat. Did you graze this morning? He's the most beautiful goat, I swear. And this poop could be used as fertilizer. It just needs to be mixed with grass and like um, compost and allowed to age for like three months. And then it can be used for fertilizer. Guys, RJ's already talking about bunnies, like rabbits, 
which is great. One of these pergolas will be for rabbits. For me, the rabbits would, I don't know if we're gonna eat them. I have eaten rabbit, it's delicious. The meat is really good. I've had it in a dough bowl, but more for the poop. Rabbit poop, you can use immediately. It doesn't need to be aged um, when you use it as a fertilizer. So um, rabbits are great to have around with all the poop we could scoop up. They can eat, they just eat plants. So grass, um, fruit, vegetables, all the stuff that we already feed a lot of our animals, we could feed to the rabbits. Weeds that we cut, all of that. And then the poop, we can just basically put directly into the soil of our plants, our house plants, our garden here, our farming plants, right? Fruits and vegetables that we grow, the farming beds, the planters, we could just put it in there directly. So I think we're gonna get rabbits. Chicken poop is, it's too hot of a fertilizer. That needs to be aged, I think for one year, something crazy like that. So we can't really use chicken poop as fertilizer right away. But again, chickens for eggs, definitely. And I don't know, maybe meat, we'll see. Oh my gosh, guys, they're done. Well, securing it to the top, all four pergolas. Look at it, guys. It's gonna look epic. So they're now just refurbishing these foundational pillars, I guess. Oh, look at it, guys. It's so big. Yay! I can almost imagine the parrots flying through here now. Wow. I love it. Yay. What do you guys think? Cool? Wow. We can even view it from this side. See? They can fly all the way down there. Like a long alley. I also like this design of aviary because it's high, but it's not so high that we can't get to the top to do maintenance. Like the aviary in our home, there's no way I'm getting up there unless we're like building scaffolding to get up there. But here, I could actually get to the upper levels of the aviary through a ladder or something if I ever need to. See? So that's really great. Wow, OMG. I can see it now, guys. Yay, it's come to life. And you know what? We could probably add more parrots in an aviary like this. See, this could house more than six birds, but any introduction of birds to the flock should be really gradual. Just amazing. Incredible, guys. Incredible. Yay. Uh, all right, guys, so, Gonna end this vlog here. It's been an epic several days. Um, and thank you for making it to the end of this vlog and spending several days with us. Um, again, new parody coming out probably today or tomorrow or soon. Um, and also for those of you over there in Sydney, Australia, I'm coming, I'm practicing like crazy and putting together a fun show for you guys. I can't wait to meet you over there in Sydney. Um, and stay tuned, I'll be posting more about our meet and greets and shows over in North America, if there are any in Toronto and any in um, the US. Uh, stay tuned. All right, my Buhai squad. So if you enjoyed today's vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. I know you guys have been doing that. Thank you so much. And if you haven't yet, do hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.